Hello, elite educators and purposeful parents. Welcome to another video from Education Noir. Today's video is all about the struggles that teachers face daily. In this video, I'm going to provide you with the top 10 um, things that teachers struggle with on a daily basis. Hi, I'm Kimberly Denis with Education Noir, where we provide the best tips and tools to help you level up your practice for student growth and achievement. Today's video is all about the top 10 things that teachers struggle with on a daily basis. And these items are not in any ranking order. So let's get into the video. Yes, so teachers working too many roles. This is, I've been in education for over 20 years now and I've been with uh, different districts and different districts require different things. When working in a state where it is not considered a union state, then teachers generally have way more duties. They have morning duties, they have afternoon duties, they have during school duties. So I'm gonna just name some of the things that we are expected to do. First of all, we are expected to calculate, track, record data. And when we think about this, most companies, they have dedicated people that they pay to do these things for them. However, teachers are expected to do that, right? On, on their own. And we're also expected to analyze this data and then make changes in our practice to hopefully change the data and make the data better. That's one thing. And then also teachers are expected to be a counselor and I'm going to say a criminal justice professional because we're expected to incorporate social emotional learning practices, mindfulness practices into our daily lessons. Um, these are things that generally there are professionals designated for this. However, teachers are expected to do this. And the reason why I say criminal justice professionals, because we're also now expected to incorporate restorative justice practices into our um, daily lessons throughout, it, incorporated into our practice. Um, I have been blessed to be at a school where um, restorative practices are the foundation of the school. So I know how to do that easily now with circles, um, restorative circles, and of course, social emotional learning. However, if a teacher has not been exposed to some of the things that I've been fortunate enough to be exposed to, they have to research it. They have to figure it out on their own. However, while in, their administrators expect them to do this. Teachers are also expected to often um, have a morning duty. They may have to um, do what's called bus duty and make sure that you know the kids are are getting off the bus and, and going into the building safely they may have after school bus duty they may have lunch duty where they have to um be in the cafeteria to make sure that the students are you know safe and that everything is running smoothly with um with lunch um, teachers are sometimes expected to host after school um, clubs. They may be expected to hold after school tutoring. Um, if their students uh, didn't get, get the lesson um, during the lesson, then they may be expected to um, work with that student after school. They may also um, be expected to work with students who missed school and um, catch that student up. And this might have to happen after school. Uh, stu some sc school districts require their teachers to host clubs and sponsor after school activities. Um, so all of these things, in addition to um, planning spectacular lessons, 
in grading papers or grading online work. So teachers have way too many roles, way too many. Uh, in addition to all of these things, of course, they're expected to keep in touch with parents on a regular basis. And so there are just high expectations for one person. So yes, teachers have way too many roles. Teachers being held accountable for more than they should. Uh, this is a this is a tough one. Um, I have definitely felt the pressure of this. Um, we have to make sure that students turn in their work, um, whether that's classwork or homework. We have to make sure that students are prepared for standardized tests. We have to, um, when students are not uh, receiving what they need from home, we have to step in and we have to find a way to provide what's lacking at home. Um, I do believe that we are being held accountable for way more than we should. Um, a lot of um, a lot of these things really start at home, right? Um, study skills, uh, uh, reading practice, um, you know, just some of the basic things like you know how to hold a pencil. Um, being able to write write their names. I don't teach in elementary school. I teach in high school right now. I mostly have worked with middle school and high school students. However, I do have students who um, are still reading on a third grade level, second grade level, and they are in secondary education. So, uh, even though they are reading at this level, the the brunt of the work, the brunt of the responsibility, it still falls on the teacher. Uh, and currently, um, where I teach now, uh, students aren't even expected to bring materials to school. We provide everything. We provide paper, we provide pencils, um, we provide glue sticks. I mean the basic things that I used to buy for my son to, you know, for back to school, to, to make sure he's ready for school. Um, students just, they don't come with that stuff. So we provide it all. We provide everything. I, I provided composition notebooks for my students because I like to do interactive notebooks with my students. I provided that for them. Um, I, I, I got tired of asking and asking over and over <laughs> sending notes home emails <clears throat> i email my supply list and so we provide everything we provide everything so we are held accountable for so much more than we should be Well, this is this one is probably a shocker to some of you who are not in education. However, teachers rarely have enough time to plan lessons, plan lessons, plan units, plan um, even if they're in a uh, special educator, have they don't have enough time to plan um, to write their um, individualized education plans or IEPs. We do not, it, it's almost communicated without stating it that, uh, you, you know, we need to work from home. We need to do these things at home. Um, so we, we do not have generally enough time during the school day to plan our lessons and it still baffles me after over 20 years that I'm not provided enough time to plan when that is the essence 
of why I am there to provide um, effective lessons for the students. However, I'm not given enough time to do it during the school day. So I have taught in um, um, schools that don't have specialized uh, curriculum. And I taught in uh, international baccalaureate school, which is a specialized curriculum. Um, sometimes people refer to it as, the, an, as an IB school. And when I taught at the IB school, that's the only time that we worked as a team, like we planned as a team, we wrote curriculum as a team. I was able to actually do a cross-curricular unit on genocide when I taught at the IB school because we all worked together. Not only did we work together, and that was a middle school, we also um, met once a month with our speeder school, which was a high school. So, um, that was a great experience, right? It's always better when we can work as a team because we glean from each other. We, we learn different strategies from each other. However, usually um, I am in a situation where I, I'm pretty much working in isolation in uh, education. Most, most schools um, I t I'm, I'm not able to plan with someone, even, even um, it would be helpful if I could plan with my, um, someone else who teaches in my same subject, but we don't even have the same planning times off. So there's no opportunity for um, co-planning. Um, there really is a very, very, there's a lack of teamwork and planning in education, in U.S. education in general. We, um, I know that like some of the core subjects at my current school, they have uh, the, a common planning time where they can actually, um, they can plan together. And that's just uh, actually the same grade level, right? Um, it's not the whole, um, you know, the whole English department or the whole math department. They meet um, once a week, I think. But when they meet, it's not necessarily a planning meeting. It's more like um, logistics and other things that come into play. And I have, I have a... Um, meeting similar to that as well for my subject area, but it's more logistics and, you know, what's coming up and kid talk and things like that, but not necessarily actually working together as a team. Um, and I think that this is, honestly, I really think it's just a U.S. A US thing. Um, in studying um, education for other countries and, um, you know, working with the Fulbright uh, Teachers for Global Classrooms, I learned that um, there's more collaborative um, planning and just more teamwork in other cultures. So this is definitely a challenge for teachers, especially if they are a first year teacher. Um, and I remember how I felt as a first year teacher. I felt like I was just on an island, like, and I was just trying to survive. And I, my first teaching position was in Baltimore City. And even though it was in the 90s, it was, it was the mid 90s, it was still very challenging and um, not being able to have um, a mentor or some type of team planning um, definitely made it more difficult as a first year teacher. So lack of teamwork is another D. 
daily struggle. Excessive paperwork. <laughs> I touched on this earlier in regards to data collection. So, um, yes, we are expected to, um, of course, grade papers, right? We're expected to track data, plot data. Um, we're expected to do something with that data. Where I am currently, they want us to do reteach plans. They've kind of um, loosened the reins on that only because I think uh, the pandemic, I think that's why they, they did. But we were expected to um, write reteach re plans for the data. Um, there's a lot of paperwork. It depends on your subject. Um, I have been a, a, in the position of English as a second language teacher, and there's a lot of paperwork with that. It's almost as much as being a special educator. Um, it's very similar. Um, so there is a lot of paperwork. Not Sometimes this paperwork is digital. So I'm counting digital and I'm counting physical. But um, we also have to um, input every time we contact a parent that has to go into um, what we call, we call it documents, um, but it's on our grading system called ASMIN. We are expected to put our student conference, one-to-one -one student conference um, information into uh, a tracker. Um, students, we have to make sure they complete a student one-to-one -one conference form. That has to be done. That needs to go into the Aspen documents. It's just, it's a lot of uh, paperwork. And when we think about other professions, um, a lot of times they have an assistant to help them with, with these things. And, um, Again, back to so many roles that teachers have to, we wear a lot of hats. So we have to keep our own documentation. And not only do we have to do all those things I just mentioned, but we also have to um, provide uh, evidence for our evaluation systems. So we have to write um, what we've, what we have done and we have to provide evidence for that. And it's um, it's almost like 10 points and it's electronic. Um, I, I, I was in a district where we had to turn these big binders in and we had to provide evidence for each of the of the standards. Um, so it's 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 a lot of paperwork. So I don't really have a whole lot to say about keeping up with the expectations of school administrators. Um, this will vary from um, school to school. Um, I think that asking the administrator what they expect, I think is, um, is wise. However, understand that um, each administrator will have different expectations right um so, and it's important as a teacher to know what the expectations are but um i think where it gets touchy is when you have an administrator and then you have two assistant administrators and they're not on the same page that's where it can get a little touchy and it can become a struggle so it is really important to ask <laughs> what the expectations are. And I think also where this can get a little sketchy is if the communication is not, uh, if there are issues with communications. Yeah. If communication is an issue in, in, in the building, then it's really going to be difficult to know 
what the expectations are. And I have definitely been in um, some buildings and in some situations where I was wondering like, what is the expectation? And that's not good <laughs> if, if I have to wonder what it is. I think it, it, expectations need to be clearly communicated. However, again, sometimes communication is an issue. So this can be a struggle. So this is definitely a struggle. Um, taking care of personal, taking, dealing with personal care. I think that um, I, I wanted to put this uh, in a more professional uh, way. Um, when I was doing my research for this video, it was no time to deal with bodily functions. <laughs> and I actually have worked in um, a district where I literally only got 20 minutes to eat lunch. And I think that any educator watching this video can attest to being in um, a school building and only having 20, 25 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes for lunch. Because again, remember I said, sometimes you have to do lunch duty. And having to do lunch duty takes away from, you know, the teacher's personal time to eat lunch. So yes, I have been in a um, in several um, school districts where I only only got twenty minutes for lunch, and then when am I gonna have time to use the restroom? <laughs> I gotta eat, and I eat slow. Okay, I'm usually always the last one up from the dinner table. I eat slow. So I'm I'm sitting down finally getting a time getting some time to just breathe and have some downtime and eat lunch and then oh my gosh I have to use the restroom but my kids are coming to the classroom oh. so there's a whole meme about this like I I got I gotta eat lunch I gotta make copies I gotta pee <laughs> which but like how am I gonna prioritize this like what which one's gonna go first like. So I think that that's definitely an issue across the country that teachers generally do not have time during the day to just take care of personal needs. And um, I'm not sure, you know, I'm currently in working in a union um, state. So I actually get almost an hour for lunch. That's I've never experienced that. I've been teaching for over 20 years now. I've never experienced that. Um, this is an issue. This is a daily struggle for teachers that, that they cannot deal with their personal care. This is another struggle curriculum coverage versus securing mastery um is it education about learning yeah i think it is however um we have something called a pacing guide and that means that at by a certain time of the year uh at certain times of the year let's say uh um a month uh we're expected to cover a certain amount of material and then move on to the next you know material and then after another month we're expected to move on whether the students get it or not i know with certain subjects that they they get that, that like their administrators are um sticklers for um, them being on the pacing guide, right? Um, math, um, English language arts, science, history. These are the core subjects and they are often um, 
pressured, I'll say, to stay on pace with their pacing guide. Uh, I think that other subjects have a little bit more flexibility with it, like music, art, um, world language, um, physical education. They have a little, a little bit more flexibility. However, there's still some pressure to, to get through the material that is covered. And um, a lot of times the pace is moving so fast at the expense of leaving certain students behind. And I've always been a teacher who teaches a little bit, I teach a little bit slower usually than the pacing guide because I wanna make sure that the majority of the students get the material. Um, I have been, I have not been penalized, but I have definitely had um, uh, some conversation with an administrator about um, moving faster through the material. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, this is a struggle for me as a teacher. And I know that this is a struggle for many teachers, you know, who know that, you know, several or maybe half of their students still just don't get it, but they still have to move on anyway. So this is a struggle because we're there to, we're there to teach, we're there to make sure that students are learning. Um, and when we have to keep going, even though we know they don't get it, it's not a good feeling and it is definitely a struggle. The next two struggles are really related to the pandemic and the after effects of um, having to teach virtually for um, almost two years. And so the first one is addressing, um, what is it? Addressing interrupted learning. Uh, hmm. This is definitely a struggle for um, teachers today because we are all <laughs> having to address interrupted learning. Some things as simple as how to enter the classroom, how to, um, how to uh, self-manage in the classroom, how to exit the classroom, how to ask for materials. Like these are things that we're, we're I'm, 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 I'm probably speaking for most teachers, but these are things that we are having to remind the students about, having to model, having to discuss, you know, those things. But then also there is the, you know, the, um, the learning that, that they didn't get in person that we're having to go back and reteach. And so that coupled with trying to stay on the pacing guide, right? We're trying to accelerate the learning um, stay on the pacing guide, reteach what they should have learned, you know, two years ago, but maybe didn't because they were um, learning virtually. So it's just, it's a lot. We're addressing the interrupted learning time and it's, um, it's definitely a daily struggle. So if you are getting value out of this video, I ask that you tap that like button and let's get into number 10. And that is following um, the COVID-19 safety protocols. <sighs> this one's, this is a, this is a tough one for me because if a student, you know, if a student needs personal contact, then I, I want to I want to oblige them you know I'm I'm a hugger by nature and I teach all boys so it's always a sad hood <laughs> but you know sometimes they you know they need it maybe they're not getting that um, at home you know our students 
our students are urban youth and some of them are in group homes, some of them are foster kids, some of them live with their grandparents, some of them, you know, they're dealing with different, different things. Some of them, a lot of them are coming from homes where they are truly loved and supported and some of them are are having struggles right so it, it it it's it's very difficult to maintain social distance when um we truly care about our students so this is a struggle right and we need to maintain the social distance because we got to keep ourselves safe we got to keep the students safe we got to keep our family safe um i currently have like um my area my desk there's a whole area taped off like the students are not supposed to cross the the, the line right but they do so it's it's difficult it's extremely difficult um i want to go around and i want to like work with them one-on-one -on -one and I hold back from doing that. I, I, I am at my, I'm not an at my desk teacher, but I'm finding myself at my desk more because we've had so many cases. Um, prior to the Christmas break, we had, we had cases, several cases a day, every day. And so I had, I had to make sure I'm safe. I want to make sure they're safe. I want to make sure my family is safe. And so I find myself, um, you know, at my desk a lot. Um, so not only that, but we are also, you know, having to um, wipe down the desk. So, you know, I what I try to do is daily remember for each class to wipe down the desk and the chairs before they leave and I try to also wipe things down before I leave for the day like the door handles and the things that I know that were touched like the pencil sharpener and I also try to spray Lysol at the end of the day or th even at the start of the day so it's um trying to follow all of these different protocols and maintain the social distance is it's a struggle it's a struggle. It is definitely a struggle. And I know it's a, a necessary struggle, but it is a struggle. Thank you so much for staying till the end. And now I have a bonus struggle. We did all 10 and this is number 11. And this is a bonus. Maintaining um, a degree of remote learning. Uh, yes, that is happening for some teachers. Some teachers are teaching hybrid, and that means that they are working with students in person and working with some students remotely, right? And remotely just simply means that they are online. The students are, are joining online through some type of learning management system. I um, Most of my students are in person, however, um, I did have a few students who had to join remotely and it's a lot to juggle um, working with students in person and working with a student online. Um, so this is definitely happening for some teachers on a regular basis because some districts um, have allowed um, the families to choose whether to for, for their students to be in person or for their students to um, learn virtually. And for some students, due to their health conditions, may they may have to um, stay on remote learning. Um, I have a family member who has an underlying health condition and um, she had to um, stay on uh, virtual learning and that was at the um, advice of her physician. So I'm sure that's happening with some other students as well. However, it, it makes for another struggle for teachers to have to juggle both, right? In person and um, virtual learning. So these are the top 10 daily struggles for teachers. And um, if you're, 
if you're an educator, please drop in the in the comments what are some of your um, struggles if they weren't in this list, and how are you um, coping with them. And thanks you, thank you again for staying until the end. Uh, if you're getting value out of this channel, I ask that you subscribe. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.